Okay, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, we're back again with um, geography. Okay, this time starting off with human geography, our sustainable development series. Okay, so to um, a lot of you, you may actually start off with other parts of your human geography, such as your resources, things like your resource curse, your resource endowment, uh, resource, um, basically your core periphery theory, um, all, all, all of that part of human geography. Okay, but for us, we're going to be starting with sustainable development okay jumping right into needs limitations and trade-offs which is basically for most of you going to be your first topic okay so the reason why i want to go through this is actually because while it may seem actually quite easy okay it can also be deceiving at the same time okay certain 12 mark questions may actually require you to tell the differences between limitations and trade-offs which i'll go through later on okay um but some of the questions for uh, sustainable development needs limitations and trade-offs can actually be a bit tricky okay so i'm gonna go through it real quick okay jumping straight in needs okay what are needs okay think of it to yourself what is a need to you okay is your iphone a need is your laptop a need are your books a need or are needs more of things like clothing shoes okay so if you're gonna go into into terms right here Okay, you actually realize that needs can be broken down into two different categories. You've got your essential needs, okay, and then you've also got your perceived needs, okay, which I'll go through after this. So essential needs can be things which actually you, you, need, it, you need it for everyday use, okay, you need it to survive, okay, things like your food, things like shelter, okay, things like clothes, things like jobs, okay, these are things that you need to actually survive, okay. But one thing that we need to point out over here is that essential necessities, okay, are your essential needs, can actually vary spatially. Okay, so in geography, we use terms like spatially, temporally. Okay, these are terms which you need to start to get used to. Okay, they are geography terms. It is very, very good if you use these terms because it actually adds a certain level of depth okay, to your answers. Okay, so you have to realize that essential needs can vary spatially. Spatially means in terms of geographical location. Okay, for instance, your developed countries versus your less developed countries. Okay, and then temporally as well. Um, whereby essential needs can actually change in the long term because let's say for a less developed country after maybe say um, a change of governance okay they're able to actually get food shelter jobs okay this will actually mean that essential needs have now no longer really become um, in, in a sense as important it could actually become a perceived needs for example with the introduction of smartphones in order or in the lesser developed countries um, instead Okay, so now then we move on to perceived needs. Okay, perceived needs, they are essentially socially and culturally determined. Okay, whereby there's a need for long-term sustainability of essential needs first. Okay, this may seem a bit complicated, but very simply, what it means is that before perceived needs can come into play, you have to first realize and understand that my essential needs must be met. Okay, for instance, there's no way I can afford a smartphone or a laptop without having a job. Am I right? Because without a job, I don't get income. I don't have money to spend. Okay, without this money to spend, I can't even afford a, a laptop or let's say like an Adidas shoe. Okay, so you have to realize that firstly, in order for perceived needs to be met, your essential needs in the long term must actually be met first. Okay, and you also have to realize that such needs can also be socially and culturally determined. What I mean by this, for example, in schools, okay, nowadays you see a lot of kids in primary schools have phones, have iPhones, smartphones, right? And one of this is because it is actually a, in a form of, it's like a social norm, right? If I have a phone and you don't have a phone, then you're weird, something like this. So in a sense, perceived needs, okay, to you, may not actually be a need at all, but because of societal pressures, okay, you're actually required to get certain things. Okay, then we move on to limitations. Okay, needs actually are very simple, right? Limitations, so what is a limitation? Okay, something that is a limitation to you, may not always be a limitation to someone else, right? So then we jump in. Okay, limitations are basically imposed by current levels of technology as well as current, present, and possible future needs which have to be met first. Okay, what does it mean? Okay, limitations occur as a result of needs having to be met. For example, if I want to meet a certain need but I'm unable to, it is most likely because limitations are holding me back. For example, if I want to meet an essential need such as having food, what could be a limitation? It could be that I don't have enough money. So if I don't have enough money, that could actually be a limitation. 
Okay, but in today's society, you have to realize that actually a lot of these limitations are imposed by the level of technology. For example, LDCs versus DCs, okay, your less developed versus your developed countries. You realize that a lot of developed countries, their limitations have actually been reduced a lot, right, because of technology. For example, in the past, right, limitations could be that they cannot get paper. Why? Because they don't have technology to cut down trees. But nowadays, technologies are so much more advanced. So in that sense, it's actually much easier to get these resources instead. So it no longer really becomes a limitation anymore. Okay, so moving on. Okay, limitations can also fall into two categories. Okay, I'll go through environmental limits. Okay, environmental limitations as well as your organization or society. Okay, firstly, environmental limits. Okay, basically environmental limits refers to your use of resources. Oops. Okay, and by once all your resources have been used up, your actual ability to, to regenerate these resources will be actually very hard, even with the help of technology. For example, if I cut down all my trees, the chances of me being able to replant that amount of trees in a span of five years is impossible. Because why? Tree, trees take very long to grow, right? So in that, in that sense, when it comes to the regenerating process, it may actually take extremely long okay, once your resources have been used up. Okay, so down here I put technology can enhance the carrying capacity of the resource base. Okay, what does this mean? It means that with technology, I can actually enhance the, num the amount of resources that I have. For example, things like hydroponics. Okay, hydroponics whereby the, the, they, they make use of advanced technology to actually grow fruits, crops, things like your GM crops as well. Okay, these are all technology which actually helps to expand the amount of resources such as food, which can be fed. To you and I, right? But do also acknowledge that there are spatial variations in the sense of less developed versus developed countries. Why? Because less developed countries, um, of course, have lesser technology. The technology is weaker as a result. The, the ability to actually enhance this carrying capacity of the resource base is greatly reduced as well. Okay? Okay. The other limitation that we have is limits posed by the organization or society. What does this mean? It means the way in which a society is actually crafted and molded. Okay, so you realize that most institutions facing challenges tend to be independent or fragmented, and this is usually a case of government failure. Okay, to some of you, this may be the first time you see this word. Some of you may have seen it in lecture, uh, sorry, in your previous teams. Okay, government failure basically means that if a government is unable to implement the correct policies which can actually prevent let's say the degradation of the environment or let's say which can help to boost let's say economic growth this may actually result in greater limitations okay for example a lot of governments are actually very very focused on economic growth okay this is actually a trade-off right which we will learn after this okay why is it a trade-off is because when you focus too much on economic growth let's say when you're producing a lot in your factories it results in air pollution which actually harms the environment so this will actually create a limitation so you realize how limitations and trade-offs are actually somewhat interlinked okay so you have to be very very careful when answering this part okay but usually a limitation is what will result in a trade-off okay so then trade-offs are trade-offs actually serious okay if i have a trade-off that's the mean we're all gonna die okay we'll go through this very quickly Okay, um, I want to jump to the end part. Okay, trade-offs are basically like an opportunity cost. Some of you may have learned this in econs. Okay, which um, impedes the achieving of sustainable development. Okay, like I've just said, okay, usually trade-offs are a result of certain needs and certain limitations that you have. For example, if I need to pursue economic growth, this may actually result in greater air pollution, which actually is a limitation, right? And this is actually a trade-off. Because why? If you look at sustainable development, you have to acknowledge the three pillars your social, economic, and environment. So if you're going to have to pursue one environment, definitely your economic impact, uh, definitely your, sorry, if you're going to pursue economic development, definitely your um, environment will be at risk. It will be at a trade-off, at a disadvantage. Okay, which is why the whole point of sustainable development in the world itself, sustainable, okay, is to try and achieve a, a equal growth for each three of these aspects. Okay, so we'll quickly go through one example of a social um, trade-off, which is income distribution. Okay, this is one aspect of the quality of growth, whereby rapid growth combined with worsening in income distribution, if you realize it's actually worse than slow growth, but there is actually the redistribution of income okay, to the poor. 
Okay, this is a very, very um, classic example. Okay, right, when you want to pursue rapid growth, usually the incomes of the rich will get higher, but the incomes of the poor will actually not even, maybe may not even increase. So this will actually cause the income gap in between the two groups to actually increase, hence resulting in income inequality, which is a huge trade-off, right? Because in light of trying to aim for economic growth, you actually trade off your social aspect of life. Okay, so one more thing. Despite the increasing attention to, to resource efficiency, to actually moderate the amount of trade-offs, due to increasing affluence and population growth, environmental problems linked to resource use for economic growth will still intensify. So what do I mean by this? Okay, this is basically saying that when I want to pursue economic growth, or even with technology to actually reduce all the trade-offs to my environment, end of the day, it's still impossible. Your environmental problems will still continue to grow if you keep focusing on economic growth, which is unsustainable. Okay, so this is a huge trade-off, which governments nowadays are trying to actually balance, which is why you have got things like your sustainable development goals. Okay, you go and search it up. Okay, you have to learn this as well. Okay, these are things which the government, uh, the in fact, not even government, international organizations actually try to, to pursue okay, in order to ensure that every country tries to achieve sustainable growth and sustainable development. Lah. Okay, so now I move on to exam requirements. These are the important parts. Okay, an example of a question would be very simply to just explain the concept of sustainable development. Okay, this can come in the form of a 12 mark essay. Okay, for this kind of questions, all you do is very simple. Describe and explain what needs, limitations, and trade-offs are, as well as give specific examples. You have to give examples. Okay, examples are important. Okay. One more thing that you have to also acknowledge, okay, this will get you to a higher level, okay, possibly at L3. It's a horrible tree. Okay, L3 um, out of 9, okay, is, you have to acknowledge the fact that sustainable development is a long-term aim or problem. Okay, in itself, sustainable means that it is already a long-term thing, right? So if you want to actually achieve sustainable development, you have to acknowledge the fact that you can't do it in the short term. It takes a long time and it takes a lot of effort. So once you acknowledge this, this will get you, it will propel you towards a higher level of thinking and examiners actually like it. Okay, another difference, okay, would be, also another exam question that could come up would be explain the differences and similarities between limitations and trade-offs. Okay, so some similarities that you can actually list is that they occur spatially in every country. So always use these terms, spatially, temporally. Okay, this is what, this is what captures the examiner's um, eyes, okay, whereby it can occur in both less developed and developed countries. Okay, but you realize later on uh, that the limitations and trade-offs are different in both cases. So that would be a difference. Okay, one more thing you have to realize is they are actually also similar in terms of their relationship. What do I mean by this? Okay, is that actually limitations and trade-offs can actually both harm the achieving of sustainable development. Right? Makes sense, what? Right? When you have limitations, when you have trade-offs, your path to sustainable development won't be easy. It will be more bumpy, right? And as a result, they can both actually impede a country from achieving sustainable development. Okay, so both are long term. That's one more thing as well, as well as inevitable. Okay, every country will definitely have. You cannot escape limitations and trade-offs. The only difference is what kind of limitations and trade-offs you may have. Okay, so it brings me to the next point, which are your differences. So differences could be things like the severity of limitations. Okay, your severity could actually be different. For example, usually limitations and trade-offs are definitely going to be more severe in LDCs, correct? Because of, the, firstly, they are already limited by their financial resources. So of course, trade-offs are bound to just occur, especially when the developed countries make use of them, exploit their resources. That's why you've got resource curse, all of these kind of problems, okay? One more thing is that limitations are inherent. They are hard to resolve while trade-offs can be prevented or reduced with effective governance. This is a very good term. I recommend you use it. Okay, what does this mean? Limitations are bound to be there. Okay, every country will always have limitations and it's extremely hard to resolve. Okay, because things like an LDC having very limited financial resources, without a strong government to actually bring in things like trade, right, it's actually going to be extremely, extremely difficult for the country to ever break out of this financial curse. Right? However, trade-offs, can actually be resolved much simpler. Okay, for example, if my country is facing a trade-off in, let's say, the environmental aspect, all I need to do is employ technology or perhaps reduce 
my economic growth slightly so as to manage my environmental impacts and in that way my sustainable development can be achieved but one thing you have to realize is that this can only be done with your effective governance so end of the day what is always very very important is your effective governance okay so mainly needs limitations and trade-offs actually very simple this is all we need to understand okay but just take note of these potential 12 marks questions which can actually throw people off okay so be very very clear with the differences and use key terms such as your limitations uh, sorry, such as uh, spatially temporally okay the severity okay um, other things such as whether limitations and trade-offs um, are actually um, inevitable okay if not that is all for this first part of um, your human job series okay we'll carry out the second part soon okay um, if you have any questions do leave it in the comments below um, and if you feel that this is helpful do drop a like and, and you know just uh, feel free to subscribe if you, if you want to as well okay if not I'll see you in the next one bye bye